But come on, a demon? While cruising around in a Hellcat King Daytona? That is a rare bird, and the chances of me just seeing it while getting lunch, that is so sick. Ah! Hey crew, I've got the key to that Dodge Charger Hellcat King Daytona, and it's a bit chilly this morning, so I want to remote start and get the heat going. That's nice. Good morning, everyone. Ah, now as the Charger Hellcat gets warmed up and heats up that cabin for me, I want to take note of a couple things while it's still here in the driveway. For one, the idle and the depth of the base of that idle and how if it's running for a long time, your neighbors might get a little bit upset. Uh, they tolerate me. I have conversations with all of them. They know what I do. They, uh, they forgive me. Spacing wise, here it is in my driveway with it, I wanna say maybe six inches from that side, parked next to my CT5 V Blackwing, which is also about six inches from the side of the driveway. And there's definitely enough space for you to walk in between the two. I also had to cover up my Blackwing because there was a little bit of tension going on here. Two of the most powerful V8 supercharged sedans that America has made parked right next to one another, the last of their breed. Mine was feeling a little left out. Thankfully, I have a really nice semi-custom seal skin car cover for the outdoors with a nice lining inside to protect the paint. And I love this car cover. Guys, if you want to grab one of these, I have a discount code and I'll make sure that it's in the description and here in the card. Great car cover. But this car in this Go Mango paint job is just looking like it's ready for action. So I'm not going to delay any further. I'm going to hop behind the wheel with the remote start function the key fob opens up immediately as you put your hand on the handle. And this is the spacing that I have. I think just one notch. Yeah, that's as far as I can go. And one notch still gives me enough access here to slide in and duck my head. And hello, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in the life video in the Dodge Charger Hellcat King Daytona. So before we do anything behind the wheel, I do have to tap this start stop button with my foot on the brake. That tells it that yes, I am here with the key in my pocket or here in the console in the storage area and no one is trying to steal it, which Hellcats and Chargers in general are, I think the most stolen vehicles in America, certainly the most stolen performance vehicles in America. Down into drive and I have to release the push foot brake which I can't believe that's still on a modern vehicle. And we're gonna roll on out of here, over my curb ramps. Not that clearance would be an issue anyway in this vehicle. And let's go right into a test of the turning radius. Wheel cranked. That's really not bad. Considering 305 section tires up front, they don't push it wide at all. This is a great turning circle. And what about the world famous horn test? Yeah, that gets the message across, I should say so. And the turn signal sound now. This might sound bizarre, but that sounds like a loud noise heard from further away. One I'd like to stop hearing just as soon as possible. So I'm gonna pull off here and we're gonna look at the backup camera and see that it is screen filling indeed, but it's also terribly low resolution. And I get it, Dodge is phasing out this vehicle, but could they not spend $50 maybe? I'm sure their at wholesale cost would be way less just to upgrade that quality. Cause at night especially, you can't see anything. At least you have trajectory lines. Look at that. Now into park, I'm going to look at the drive mode. So if you go to the SRT dashboard and then choose drive modes, we can see we've got a track mode, a sport drive mode, a custom mode where you, where you can go in and configure the power output, the transmission shift aggression, whether you want the paddle shifters engaged or not, how invasive you want the traction control system, how firm you want the suspension, and how heavy you want the steering. And then we have an auto mode. And what's interesting about, look at this delay, what's going on? Didn't even go. This needs an update. Um, what's interesting about the auto mode is that it also has an eco function, which will cut the power down from 807 horses to just 500. 
just 500. I actually like starting off my day in eco mode because it dulls the throttle response and you can kind of just ease into your morning. And you know what? Telling you is one thing, but showing you is another. So this is in the eco mode. Just getting onto the throttle. And in a linear way, easing up to speed. I mean, you always have a lot of power at your disposal, but this is totally manageable. Now I'm gonna turn Eco off, and you do have to be off the throttle for the power to change. Now we've got 807, and I'm just gonna... I kid you not, that was half throttle, maybe, honestly a third throttle, and we were spinning the rear rubber. The problem with this, as you're just kind of getting acquainted with your life in the morning, is that if your foot just... If your foot slips, uh, then uh, you may just be sideways instantly. Am I being too dramatic? Possibly, because traction control is there and if it's engaged, it's gonna stop you from spinning out. But I'm not being oversensitive about how sensitive the throttle is when you've got all 807 horsepower from that 6.2 liter supercharged V8 going to just the rear tires, which if they don't have heat in them, and if they're in this case, all seasons, they can be quickly overwhelmed. So, just in my case, I go, let's start off in eco and we'll build up to the full measure of power and fun later on in the day. Moving on with our commute. The Charger Hellcat has a set of adaptive dampers and steel springs that even in the most mild street setting do keep the ride very taut. You are moving around over changes in the road surface, but there is a level of insulation that comes from the dampening. And what's helping that is the fact that these chairs are so thick. Like someone needs to check their living room because I think their armchairs have been stolen and placed in the cabin of this Charger Hellcat which actually help to absorb some of the imperfections in the road as they make their way through the suspension and on into your body. The problem though is that they're not perfectly supple. The padding is actually a little bit firm, not necessarily in the bottom cushioning, but in the back cushioning. And then when you've got a rod that's moving around like this, it's not the most relaxed mode of transportation, at least around town. Now as we join the highway, Allow me to report on the stop and go traffic situation with the Charger Hellcat. The good news is that these Brembo brakes, six piston up front, four piston in the back, are really easy to modulate through this pedal. Like I feel the braking force happening and I can just sort of ease up to the cars in front of me so there's not that abruptness of initial bite as you have to accelerate, which I do in eco mode so it's not too crazy, and casually brake. Accelerate. I'm not saying you're gonna enjoy traffic, but you won't be as angry as your car sounds. And there is other good news in terms of maneuvering through the vehicles in various lanes, and that is that with this sedan body style and not this coupe design that has become so popular, the blind spot is really very small, and you do have blind spot monitoring as well, so you can easily see around the cars, spot your gaps, and go for them. And as traffic finally starts to thin and you're feeling more confident, maybe you go into custom mode where I've got it at the full 807 horsepower, but the suspension's still in the softest setting and you, you just kind of stretch your legs a bit. Yeah, I think I was still spinning tires in what I'm sure was fourth gear, but passing power? Yeah, we got plenty of that. And if you want some manual control, you can pull over on the gear selector to allow you to use the paddle shifters, which you can really only use with like two fingers because they're just stubby half paddles. Ooh, but the shifts are nice and quick. And uh, just easily, easily gap your, uh, your neighbors. Unreal. I like it, I like it a lot, and who needs coffee? Not with this, not with this. 
Okay, but even if I don't need it, I still want coffee. And this shop is pretty cool because it's attached to a church. Not my church, but it's the same God. All right, I got my breakfast to go and some beans for later. And you know what I have to do, even though we're this close, still. Little hesitation, but uh, no shyness. Now, where is this stuff going to go? Key there. This is going to go here. This will fit here. And these are going to go in here. Well, that's not bad. Do you ever wonder how you look while you're driving something? Camera sure looks funny on my head. At least the wheels make up for it. Yikes, with that little detour, I just barely managed to make it to work on time. So let's pull this one back into the spot, utilizing my terrible backup camera. And the mirrors. And the parking sensors. To get it just right in place. Make a quick exit. Oh, shoot. Got my key. Man, that looks good. Uh, I'll see you at lunch. All right, it's lunch break time, and nothing sounds better to me right now than an In N Out burger. Hi there, doing well. What can you get for you today? May I please have a three by one okay. with no tomato okay. and chopped chilies? Would you like onion from that? Yes, please. Okay. And then an animal style fries. Perfect. Any drinks for you today? No, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. Just a friendly reminder that 2,000 calories a day is used for general nutritional advice, but calorie needs vary, and that's good because I think I'm gonna hit 2,000 calories with just this meal. Hello. I admire your car. What's that? Where's the matter? It's admiring your car. You're admiring the car? Yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's perfect for video. Yeah, it is, Kona? yes. It's nice. Good eye. <laughs> not a lot of people know, it's like, oh, it's just a Hellcat. No, <laughs> Yeah, it's. I have to say it's not mine. I'm just reviewing it, but I love this car. I, like it so far. I really love it. That's nice. Enjoy. Thank it. you. Have a good day, Nicole. Hi, Oreo. Hi there. Doing well. Uh, any ketchup? Yes, please. Here's the animal fry, and here's that burger. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I'm gonna have a great day. And immediately after getting my burger, I spy a demon. Yes, the original demon, not the 170, but come on, a demon? While cruising around in a Hellcat King Daytona? This is unreal. That is a rare bird, and the chances of me just seeing it while getting lunch, unreal. That is so sick. Oh, day made, absolutely. And seeing that car is a great reminder of the fact that I did order a Demon 170, and here we are knee deep into December, the last month that Dodge is gonna be able to build those cars. I've heard no status updates. I still don't have a VIN number for my car, which makes me very scared that Dodge isn't going to build it. But I really hope they still are, because they accepted the order, and it's in the production queue, and I wanna drive and own that car and make lots of videos on it, so. Yeah, but I guess if you haven't seen my how I ordered my Demon 170 video, you can go watch that now. Okay, I found myself a relatively shady spot to enjoy my lunch on the trunklet. And before you tear apart my meal choice, those of you who know the in and out menu, just give me a second to explain. I mean, you're more than welcome to voice your concerns in the comments, feel free. So here we got the three by one, which is three patties, one slice of cheese, and I did go with the onions, and the animal style fries, which are fries with cheese and grilled onions and their special sauce. The reason I didn't go with the three by three as an example is because I feel like I'm looking for the perfect meat to cheese to bread to onion to potato ratio here. And I think if I went with too much cheese, I'd be overwhelmed by the time I made it to the indulgence 
that is those animal style fries. Okay, now that I've eaten so much, it's hard to move. This is a good time to just take a walk. And why not do that around the Dodge Charger Hellcat King Daytona? This last call model is limited to 300 units, and all of them are painted in this Go Mango color. It's an orangey, fiery red, and feature these hood pins, which at one point in time were used for function, and now they're just stylish. They also get these satin finish, look almost polished, 20 inch wheels with orange painted Brembo brakes inside. And as we get to the back, we see this King Daytona script on this trunk lid stripe. And that's, I'm now realizing how the in and out employees probably knew this was a King Daytona. I thought they just had eagle eyes. I mean, maybe they did, maybe they just knew, but it says it right there. They also get this matte black lip spoiler and otherwise it's just a Hellcat red eye wide body. Just a Hellcat red eye wide body. This thing looks so meaty. I love the over fenders and the unapologetic grit and muscle and mass of this Hellcat. And as we now take a look inside, we're gonna find this Napa leather seating with suede inserts and this ribbed pattern that is unique to this vehicle with orange contrast stitching. And as I step inside, having to duck my head because the seat height is really tall. And then, ah, yes, especially with my hat on, my head doesn't clear the roof, but even with it off, I'm kind of just resting against this back glass piece. So that's not very comfortable. I do have leg room behind my own seat at six feet tall and the thigh support is solid because the foot pockets are nice and large. But yeah, you can't be really tall and sit in the back without hitting your head on that roof. You've got rear seat heating and two USB-A ports for accommodations. No one's gonna really enjoy sitting in that middle seat. Now moving up front. Where I made the mistake of letting the door swing all the way open. It's a really far reach. Into accessory mode we go, where we find a Hellcat with red eyes on the digital TFT display. This itty bitty thing, not a fully digital gauge cluster. We still have these analog gauges for the Speedo and TAC. They are red backed and illuminated which feels like old school muscle stuff. So I'm okay with that. The steering wheel on the King Daytona is suede wrapped and heated. That feels nice in the hands. The paddles I've already complained about. The matte carbon fiber trim around the gauge cluster and infotainment screen and here on the console looks and feels very nice. The infotainment system is dated at this point. It's still decently responsive. The graphics are not that sharp. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but they're wired via one of these two USB-A ports. No USB-Cs in here. The spot for your smartphone, it's not a wireless charging pad, and it doesn't really hold the full size of the phone, so it does slide out sometimes. You've got these physical inputs for volume and tuning and for climate, I like that. No touch sensitive things here. You just know what you're doing when you hit those buttons. And then I mentioned the slot for your key. You've got cup holders and a good bit of storage in the console. Nice thick padding on that as well. And then we've got Daytona on the seat backs and a King Daytona plaque on the passenger side. Apart from the orange accents and those things though, this is just a regular Hellcat cabin, which we've seen for a very long time at this point. It works, but just that for a hundred thousand bucks. But that subpar conclusion is just not fair. It's not fair to the Hellcat because it has one element that fully redeems this cabin. One feature that no sedan competitor can even get close to matching. It's the sun visors. Look at these things. They're massive. They fully cover the viewing area. And not only do they slide, they also extend. So there isn't a chance that the sun can come in and invade your vibe. Crushing it, Dodge. And now I really should head back into the office, but you know what they say. I don't wanna work. I just wanna bang on this drum all day. <laughs> Wait, wait, I've got a better one. I don't wanna work. I just wanna burn out these tires all day. <laughs> and those shenanigans do remind me of one very practical point to the way that the Hellcat wide body is set up. And that is the fact that it has a squared stance, meaning we've got 305 section front and rear tires. So if you nearly torpedo, don't fully wear out the rear tires, you can just move them to the fronts and the fronts to the back and keep on smiling. <laughs> and as I continue to evade my responsibilities here, I want to quiet up for a minute on the highway so we can listen for the NVH level.
which is startlingly good, right? Like, for all my maligning of this interior specialness for $100,000, they really got the cabin isolation right. There's not a ton of wind noise or road noise. Even the big tires aren't humming along. And that V8 motor is barely making a peep at partial throttle in eco drive mode. This is the kind of stuff that matters if you're actually gonna drive this every single day and commute in it. Now, one of the harsh realities of driving an 807 horsepower sedan is that your fuel economy is gonna be terrible. The EPA rates this vehicle at 12 MPG in the city, 21 on the highway, and 15 combined. And if you got that 15 combined, then with this 18.5 gallon fuel tank, you'd have 278 miles on a single tank, which is not terrible, but we've been averaging 10 miles per gallon over the last 210 miles. So you're looking at 185 miles of range. And so if you live somewhere like California, even if you visit Costco for your gas, as I'm doing now, it's still going to be $4.35 for premium fuel. And now after spending a lot of money on gas, it's time to go spend more money on inflated groceries. Well, it turned out to just be a single bag of groceries sort of day. I don't think we're going to flex the 17 cubic feet of space that we have in the Charger's trunk. But I can show off one neat feature. And that is having grocery bag holders. So if I create a little bit of tension here, hopefully that's not going to topple over. The only other thing to note about this trunk is that it's pretty recessed. So if I had anything truly heavy in here, it'd be a lot of pressure on the lower back to get it out. Thankfully, that's not an issue today. And with the errands now taken care of, my day in the life with the Charger Hellcat is just about over. But don't worry, the video is not over because we still need to experience a bit of a night in the life. And I'm going to finalize my thoughts on what it's like to live with this vehicle. All right, crew, the sun has set, and now under the cover of night, the Hellcat is ready to inspire trepidation in traffic once more. Let's go. <laughs> Look at the red SRT in the steering wheel, the red back gauges, and listen to this thing. I mean, driving this car during the day is incredibly exciting. So, so fun. But at night, for me, it just absolutely comes alive. And I think all that stems from the fact that I saw a commercial for the original Challenger Hellcat when that came out many, many years ago and it was prowling the streets. It was doing all these smoky burnouts and I just got so darn excited watching that that now living this out in the Charger Hellcat, it just feels like a dream come true for me. But I wanna summarize my thoughts on what it's like to actually live with the Charger Hellcat, whether it's the base model, the red eye, or this you know, last call King Daytona. And I'll start with the things that are less than desirable. One, and this could go both ways, and it will in fact, it's ultra loud, like neighbor disturbing loud. The bass of that idle and the shout of that motor at first startup is, is pretty intense. Um, two, the features are, are very outdated and some things are pretty much inexcusable at this point. The backup camera is horrendous. And three, it's not all that comfortable. Yeah, it's got these armchairs in it, but the suspension is definitely on the firmer side and the cushioning in these seats, at least for the back padding, could be softer. It is predictably terrible on fuel, so you're gonna be going through that 18.5 gallon tank on the regular and spending a lot of time and money at the gas station. And then, of course, there's the simple fact that this one is tested is $100,000, and I'm not so sure that this cabin can back all that up. Now let's flip this the other direction. The things you're gonna absolutely love about living with a Charger Hellcat. Those noises, the same ones that are disturbing your neighbors. For you, well, <laughs> they're making you laugh. The supercharger wine, the overtones of Hemi V8, and then 
just on the tail end of that, the actual speed is unbelievable and completely intoxicating. You're gonna wanna do burnouts all the time. You're gonna wanna just level your foot to the floor as much as possible and just let the childish giggles come out. Just let it come out. It's okay. You earned it by purchasing this vehicle. There goes the phone, because this phone holder is not large enough. That's, I guess, a negative one as well. If the noises don't do it, then there's the sheer intimidation of this design. It's impossible not to feel cool, and it's impossible not to feel a little bit on your toes if you see someone coming in a Charger Hellcat. It has earned its reputation, not just because people crash these almost as often as Mustangs, but because they're just frightful monsters on the road, and they scare other traffic away. And then there's the fact that they're actually kind of livable in terms of commuting in. Yeah, the ride could be softer, but the cabin is pretty darn quiet, even considering the price point. And they're maneuverable around town. The turning circle is not bad, and they're even practical. I wish there was a little more headroom in the back, but the trunk is massive, and you can just kind of find spots to put your junk in this car. And that's the kind of stuff that when you're living with something every day, you really need. And then there is the one point that I voiced earlier that I think people just don't share enough. And that is the fact that these sun visors are massive and incredibly useful. So at the end of the day, yes, there are downsides to living with a Charger Hellcat, but they're completely blindsided, completely overwhelmed by all of these shouty positives of this vehicle. Would I still choose my CT5V Blackwing? 100%. I think it looks better on the outside. The Tremec six-speed manual is more fun to operate than the eight-speed auto-only gearbox of this vehicle. And the magnetic ride control just provides this incredible ride compliance and quality that is hard to pass up. And you can tell my car said that because it's still upset at me for parking this right next to it in the driveway. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV, what it's like to live with video. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you again next time.